Columbia CDR, launch director. Launch director, CDR, go ahead, sir. Okay, Scott, we'll be good to have uh, Columbia back in flight status. So we wish you good luck on this very important mission to the Hubble Space Telescope, and you all have fun up there. And uh, Launch Director Mike, uh, we really appreciate that. I just want to say thanks to the whole team that's gotten all of our Hubble equipment ready to go, and the whole team, from basically from one side of the country to the other, that's worked so hard to get Columbia ready to roar again. Hubble's up there ready for us, and we're ready to go to work. Thank you all. That's our pleasure, and you all have a great flight. The countdown clock will resume on my mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. The last auto sequence has been initiated. Ground launch sequence are now controlling. All functions between now and handoff to Columbia, we can control by this ground launch sequencer computer here in the firing room. Okay, let's just go for orbiter access arm retract. Columbia OTC, good luck on your mission, allowing us to better glimpse our future by enhancing Hubble's view of the past. It's orbiter test conductor Jeff Lawfer wishing the crew well. His oxygen vent hood now being retracted. Okay, visor's coming down, O2 coming on. To use a Navy turn, let's launch it. External tank now at flight pressure. T minus one minute. Solid rocket booster field joint heater is now being turned off. 20 seconds. Firing chain is on. 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8, 4, 3, 2, 1, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia to broaden our view of the universe through the Hubble Space Telescope. Houston now controlling the flight of Columbia, the Pioneer Shuttle headed for the Hubble Space Telescope. Program. Roger roll, Columbia. Columbia into the roll, placing the shuttle in a heads down wings level position for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. 25 seconds into the flight, Columbia's three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back in a three step fashion to 72% of rated performance, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Already two miles in altitude, one and a half miles downrange, leaving an incandescent trail behind it. Columbia headed for Hubble. Hubble almost direct over the Cape at this moment. Three engines now uh, throttling down, uh, soon to throttle back up to 104% of rated performance. The main engines, along with the three fuel cells and three hydraulic power units, all functioning normally. Standing by. Columbia, Houston, you are go at throttle up. Columbia copies, go at throttle up. That throttle up call from Capcom Mark Polanski acknowledged by Commander Scott Altman aboard Columbia. Altman joined on the flight deck by pilot Dwayne Carey, flight engineer Nancy Curry, and mission specialist John Grunsfeld, Rick Lenahan, Jim Newman, and Mike Massimino seated down on the mid deck. Columbia tracking right down the pike, 15 miles in altitude, 11 and a half miles downrange, heading due east from the Kennedy Space Center for an altitude of 350 statute miles in pursuit of Hubble. One, 45 seconds into the flight, about 15 seconds prior to solid rocket booster separation. Standing by for SRB separation. Booster officer confirms a good SRB separation. Guidance now converging. Columbia's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to gently swivel. Columbia Houston, two engine Ben. Houston, we copy, 
two engine bent. That call from Capcom Mark Polanski indicates that if one engine should fail right now, Columbia could make a transoceanic abort to Ben Gurir, Morocco. However, as it climbs into dawn, Columbia right on the money, aiming uh, the shuttle for a precise keyhole in space for main engine cutoff.